All right, my friends, this is probably one of the most insane, most deepest weeks on record for eBay sales of these varieties, errors, and various other coins, too. I think we have hit that capitulation point, the very tip top of the mountain from the holidays where, where everything kind of comes to a boil. And if you guys are not selling your coins right now, you are truly missing out. Because if you, if you have some of these coins that you found out in circulation or at the show or coin shops and you want to make some money, don't wait any longer. You guys need to do this right now. Now, as you guys know, the pocket change marker report is, it's one of my favorite videos to do each and every single week. Um, it gives us kind of like that barometer check of certain coins that sell all throughout the year, some newer 2023s, some of the older stuff, you know. And uh, when we get to the holidays, there's always kind of like the sense of urgency, the importance to not only look for the coins, but also sell it. Because you have all of your collectors. They are ready to go right now. And they generally give us all the way up to about nearly week three of the month of December before things begin to shut down. So right now, guys, if you got if you want to throw up a five or seven day auction on some of the coins that you don't personally need in your collection, or if you're a reseller and for whatever reason you're holding off on selling these. I'm telling you, don't wait any longer. Put your listings up. Make some money right now. Um, the prices have been insane. The supply has been through the roof. The demand has been nothing short of stellar. And we have kind of like this perfect alignment of the sun, moon, and stars all coming together in this one particular week. Now, I went a little bit deeper. We have 31 listings to talk about, but I could have put in, just from the last 48 hours, I could have put in 100 coins to talk about. Unprecedented. I've never done it before. Um, deep down inside, I don't want to do it because it's going to be an ultra-long video. It's probably going to be about an hour and a half because a 30-listing type video generally takes about 30 to 35 minutes. So... Yeah, that's how that's how busy it is. So keep this in mind. If if you want to, go ahead and do it. You guys are are going to make a huge impact if you're looking to get some money for the holidays. There's no better time to do it today. All right, so no graded coins. We can make that determination. Don't need to grade these things. Uh, they sell for themselves, and you're going to get the original photos from each and every single listing from each seller so you get the best and the worst then folks we have them both all right you guys are going to know what that low bar is being set for the photography aspect of it and uh, yeah let's go go ahead and just fire away right here and uh again thank you for tuning in 2000 denver okay we talk about off-center struck coins quite often most of them are Philadelphia minted coins. That's where we see a lot more of the mint errors. So Denver is a little bit tougher. This one is off center by about 65%. It's in phenomenal condition. It also kind of gives you an idea of what the planchet quality is before the strike even occurs. You can see that they're far from perfect. But this is a great coin that's a necessity for a date set of this particular error. And that's why a lot of folks are buying these is they're putting together either decade runs or they're doing a full series which is uh quite the undertaking once you get into some of the earlier dates they they become keys they're very scarce so this one right here any denver i would say is going to be a tough one 32 dollars and 38 cents quick little buy it now hit on this one beautiful coin and uh you know obviously we don't find these in coin rolls from the bank but you could cherry pick these from dealer bins dealer stock at a show or at a shop i've personally cherry picked coins like this with full readable dates for around 10 bucks all right uh just picked up some 1977d lincoln cents 
that are all center by, by some degree for like five bucks a piece. So, you know, they're out there, okay? And um, cherry picking them, you know, when you do come across them and the price is right, do not toss it back, all right? Hold on to that one with dear life and then resell it for a massive profit. Another one here from Telstar Coins, one of the biggest dealers of errors on eBay. This one is phenomenal. 1992 Philadelphia Roosevelt Dime struck off center around, uh, you know, again, 55, 60%. And not only that, there's some pretty amazing die clashing on both sides of the coin, on the obverse and the reverse. Um, again, you know, this collecting by date and this particular series is still a thing. $33.88 was the final sale price. It was another buy it now hit on this one. Uh, and again, uh, another coin that you could possibly cherry pick out there if given the opportunity. You go to enough shops and shows, um, you just never know where you're going to find. All right. Um, a uh, great one here, too. Uh, it's not an off center struck, uh, but it is a 1999 Lincoln Memorial Cent, a very common date, by the way, for any sort of out of collar strikes. However, this one is not only a broad strike. All right, where the coin was struck without that collar present, so the metal flow goes out where it's a little bit longer, leaner. Um, the coin is probably as big as a nickel at this point, but also examine the clashing on both sides of the coin. A nice dual error event right here. Simply beautiful, breathtaking. This one, buy it now auction, sold $36.38. Um, these sold as quickly as they went on for sale. Um, so again, we're, we're seeing a very tight turnaround on a lot of these particular coins. Um, you know, you, you could post them right now and they'll sell within a few hours. Okay. As long as you attribute the varieties correctly, as long as you diagnose the errors properly in your listing titles and you take great pictures, you're going to have no problem scoring big out there on the auction scene. 1958 D. Again, this is an error that just a few short year, years ago, you were lucky to get a buck or two for. But the detached lamination peel that you see here um, is, is attractive. It's attractive for its own reasons. It, it goes from rim to rim. It's long. Um, and it, it, when it kind of goes across Lincoln's face like that, it, it does you know, appear a little bit more dramatic than you know one that maybe is on the reverse or somewhere else. But... This one right here, as you can tell, is a coin that has a fair amount of circulation where it's no beauty queen by any means, but that doesn't matter. There's still going to be an ass for every seat in this hobby. This one ended up selling for $18.38. So, you know, a coin that traditionally, again, you probably sell for 2 or $3 five years ago. Now, all of a sudden, $18 later, I mean, that's 1,838 times face value. I know it seems a little ridiculous and far-fetched, but if you read it that way, the money, the returns, it's more impactful for you. A uh, pretty cool one here. Although, you know, it, it is a shield nickel, 1869's a date, and, uh, you know, unless uh, unless the other piece of the coin, this was this was pre this was a previous clamshell lamination, so it split right on the very edge of the coin, and then uh, this one looks like it was helped along. The other half of the coin had you know been pried off uh, in some way. So um, this this one is sans the second piece, uh, but very dramatic. You could kind of see that rough kind of like. Um, it looks like the side of a mountain, you know, um, as far as the texture is concerned. Um, that's that's normal for something like this. This is a split planchet error. So this one sold for $36.99. Keep in mind, even if the piece was on there, you don't know that's a clamshell. It just looks like a regular coin. This is like a $10 coin, all right, in this condition. It's, it's very low grade. Um, not particularly appealing to a lot of crowds that collect some of the earlier classics. But this one, with the error, made this one worth a lot more than your average bear. So if you do come across these and they're affordable, snatch them up. They're a great flip opportunity. 
I've personally flipped a few of these myself. Not a shield nickel, but I've had, you know, a couple V nickels in the past, a buffalo nickel, you know, and I and I make twenty five to forty bucks off of them. All right, so, and uh, it, you know, if you don't know what they are by now, uh, because I've covered this particular error before in great detail, uh, th this one is simply phenomenal. Much like the 99 that we did see, here's a 2000 Lincoln Memorial cent. Again, another nice size broad strike. This one probably is a little bit larger than a Jefferson nickel. Um, it doesn't have the die clash, but that's okay. Another common date. So 99 to 2001 in both broad strikes and off-center strikes are, are quite common. They came out of the mid sewn bags from the Fed Reserve Bank quite often. This one right here sold for $21.11. Um, again, a collector will want something like this. And because of how clean the... All right, so this is a coin, ladies and gentlemen, that I've been talking a lot more here in the last few weeks. And that's because, well, folks are kind of coming back to cherry picking some of these out of some of those dollar rolls. Now, the 2000p Sacagawea dollar was made in plentiful enough quantities um, that there's quite a few of them. And this is one of those varieties, folks, that is really easy to look for. Um, you know, if you have a magnifier ready, get ready, you know, because once you find one, it's going to be wildly addicting to find more. Now, this is the Wounded Eagle Reverse Sacagawea Dollar. can only be found on the Philadelphia Minted 2000 dated coins. Um, no other dates exist with this anomaly because it's a die gouge. When we look up close here, you can see that um, that those pair of die gouges, there's one really long one. It looks like a spear that goes through the eagle and into that wing there. And then there's also another little smaller die gouge as well. These are raised on the coin. They're not in cues to indicate maybe the coin took a hit at one point. Um, so this is also the FS901 in the Cherry Picker's Guide. This one, ladies and gentlemen, ended up selling for $63.92 with nine bids. You guys saw the condition of this coin. It is far from great, far from perfect, but that's okay. This is needed across all various, I guess, price levels uh, to help fulfill demand. And there's a lot of demand for this coin. And again, let me stress, it's not rare. These have been found quite a bit. I, I own a few myself. All right, the next one that we have here, our first piece of paper money comes in the way of a 1935 E-Series $1 silver certificate. This one, as you can tell, has what we call a gutter fold. Um, the original subject sheet had a wrinkle in it. So when the wrinkle is not stretched out, it's printed over. Afterwards, when you do stretch it out, it'll create this, uh, this inkless, unprinted area called a gutter. Um, this one right here, pretty nice diagonal type of gutter. The note doesn't look fantastic, but I, I think at the end of the day, uh, the collectability of this note far exceeds the actual condition. Uh, when we look at the back, uh, the actual wrinkle was printed over on the reverse. So, you know, we can conclude that um, that at one point the, the wrinkle was stretched out. Um, either during the print or a BEP employee actually took the time to, um, you know, stretch that out of there. So this one sold for $54.98, 28 bids. Gutter folds traditionally are a little bit lower on the totem pole for errors. So you're not going to expect to see these things sell for thousands of dollars. You know, I think at the most, you know, four or $500 for some of the more dramatic ones. Oh boy, what a heartbreaker. Uh, what could have been. 1917S Lincoln Wheat Cent is off center by about 15-20%. But look at the reverse of that thing. Uh, it's got quite a bit of uh, damage on there. Um, so I, I don't know what the deal is with this one. Um, some say that this is a, uh, a clip. I think that is also damage as well. 
Uh, it doesn't look natural enough uh, to be, you know, some sort of error. But yeah, this this coin would have easily been a hundred dollar bill uh, if it wasn't for all the scratches and and uh, post mint damage. Uh, but still, it did sell for twenty four dollars. So you know, it's it's better than nothing. Um, I, I would say a lot of people would probably prefer to let this go for that amount of money. Um, it's just too ugly a, of a coin to hold on to. Um, some folks will see some of the beauty in it, but again, um, it, it's uh, it's postman damage. It, you know, it's not for everyone. All right, we got more currency. So keep in mind, 1977 series uh, notes in general, you're going to see quite a few of them here in this particular episode of the PCMR. We have a 1977 $5 bill. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, what we call the smaller head, uh, design, uh, the, you know, in contrast to what we're seeing today in circulation, uh, the design's quite a bit different. So, uh, you know, this, this is what I grew up with, uh, was with this older, um, uh, I, I don't know, vintage design, I guess you could say. Uh, I feel I feel really old when I say that. But in any event, uh, this one, you got to make sure you look at both sides of the note. The front looks completely normal. The back is uh, quite a bit misaligned. So the, the sheet was shifted during, uh, during you know, probably the back print. Um, you can see everything's pushed over to the right uh, to the point where the, the right margin is completely missing. Uh, this one sold for $32 with five bids, all right? Um, it's the, again, it, this is um, this is a, what we call a minor misalignment. Um, and, uh, it, you know, again, it falls in kind of like that lower tier of um, uh, BEP errors. So, you know, still $32. Uh, that's a pretty good amount of money for this. All right, there you go. Uh, so this, this is like one of the undisputed kings of the error world uh, because they all sell incredibly well. This is a 1982 large date bronze or copper uh, Lincoln Memorial set. And as you can see, this one has a pretty big sized cut die break. Uh, so a piece of the die had cracked and fallen out from that die. And uh, when it strikes up these coins, it'll leave the raised event on there. All the metal flows going in into that empty cavity. Kind of call it the path of least resistance during the striking process and all that pressure that these coins go under. Um, but in any event, uh, look at the condition of the coin. I, I mean, these things have circulated for, for decades before they were finally found. And uh, even still in this state of preservation, it still managed to sell for $80.25 with 14 bits. Let that sink in. You hear me say that quite a bit um, because, you know, the, the uh, kind of like the comparison of a coin that looks in this condition, which is far from perfect to what the dollar amount is, it, you know, it, it's uh, quite substantial. All right. And it'll shock most people. Uh, the nice one here, 2019, uh, Lincoln Shield Sand. This is a really great doubled die. Um, this one has really good doubling on Liberty and the date. Uh, the seller just, just only had, uh, a really good close up of the date. Um, you know, it, there are other pictures that you could see with, um, uh, that doubling on Liberty as well. You could go to a website like coppercoins.com or Variety Vista, things like that for the attribution. Um, this is uh, WDDO number 11 in, uh, in the Wexler files. So if you go on doubledie.com, you'll see that on there. Um, so you'll, you're going to notice, uh, a lot of thickening in the date and on Liberty, like you see here, uh, one of the telltale signs, look at the middle of the zero in the date. It's got that really cool elongated cat's eye look where traditionally they would have like the perfect oval size in there. This one is anything but. Uh, $16.30. Um, this is a very findable um, uh, die variety. All right. So if you're out there on the east coast of the U.S. looking through Lincoln Sense, do not over overshadow or overlook the 2019 dates. There's a few really good ones in there. 
Uh, next piece of currency, uh, we got a 1950D $10 bill. A nice looking note here. It does have a hard centerfold, but outside of that, this thing was well preserved over the years. Uh, you got nice vivid inks all throughout the front and the back. Um, but what, what really sold this one? Um, nothing on the front that I could see, but when you flip it over again, we had another misaligned reverse print on the sheet. Uh, you can see just how far skewed it is. It's even kind of tilted a little bit too. Pretty neat. This particular piece sold for $99.39 with 26 bits. And again, the theme here, folks, they're not graded. You just take good pictures, one of the front and the back, throw it up on eBay, um, and, you know, let it ride. And, uh, you know, as long as you put in the appropriate keywords into your listing title, you'll have no problem selling these. 2023 Lincoln Shield scent. Uh, of course, we got to talk about the extra V. That is still a thing going all the way into December. Um, this particular seller, I believe, had a couple of these available. And uh, uh, this one looks to be in decent shape. Uh, the photography isn't too crazy here. Uh, you know, the white balance is definitely off. A lot of, a lot of highlights here, uh, which kind of changes the overall appearance of the coin you don't know if it's like in really nice shape or you know if it has some circulation wear on it kind of hard to tell here uh but you can see that little v notch there next to the vdb initials at the base of lincoln's bust um that's what you're looking for and all of them are going to be consistent to what this one looks like so this one sold for $37 with two bids. It's one of the lower sales we've seen here lately, but we're still seeing some pretty robust sales on this particular variety. Uh, PCGS and NGC are attributing these along with Annex, um, and that's kind of like well, what the biggest trend is with these coins, is that they're being purchased raw, they're being sent to the grading companies, they come back, they get sold on the open market, and these people are making about one to three hundred dollars in profit per each. So um, that's been uh, kind of like the easy, you know, low hanging fruit opportunity on these. Uh, another good one. If you like the 2019 Lincoln Shield scent double to die, you'll also love this one as well. This time of 2014, it's a Philadelphia minted example. Uh, this one is the WDDO number three on the Wexler files. And when we look up close here, you're going to see some nice left to right stretching of the date. And also you're going to see some thick letters on the word Liberty. Uh, as a matter of fact, RT and wide are very thick compared to a, a standard non-doubled die 2014. Um, so this particular one, a little bit tougher to find compared to the 2019. And that's why it sold for $26.49. So, uh, you know, coins in great shape and it's a really good die variety um, and one to be on the lookout for if you're not already searching for it. Yeah, paper money, very strong this week. Uh, this one quite minor, but the price tag was not. This was a surprising uh, uh, listing here this uh, weekend. This is a 2017A $1 bill. Um, yeah, it's been circulated. It's even got a little tear up top there on the margin. Um, this is what we call an inkwell contamination, and it's not even that great. Uh, the bottom left serial numbers is a little bit darker compared to the right side of the note, where the green is more robust. Um, inkwell contamination is just that. Some of the black ink from the district seal and that particular inkwell seeped into the green ink well so it made it a lot more dark kind of more of an evergreen color there are examples where the um the numbers on the bottom left uh serial number string is almost black um this one right here you could kind of see the difference here uh looking at the back of the note you'll see that it, it's a pretty well weathered note uh nice v, vf grade if, if i had to you know guess uh, but still, another good one here. This one ended up selling for a cool $100. So that's a great magic trick. Anytime you could, you know, realistically take a $1 bill, wave kind of like this beautiful magic wand that we call the hobby above it, and then sell it for 100 bucks. I mean, that, there, there's no better flip than that. 
very, very liberating. Uh, again, always good to see some classics on here. This one actually, you know, kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, even though it's small. 1883, Liberty V Nickel. This is the one with the no sense on the reverse. Um, but you see right there at the date, a, uh, a, a pre-cut, a re retained cut die break. Um, quite noticeable and uh yeah i've seen this one before and uh they you know they, it's it's impressive for what it is 37 dollars 99 with four bids was the final sale on this one so a coin that traditionally you could have bought for five to ten bucks you turn around flip it for you know 10x that uh that, again that that's a that's a great flip right there and that that's the name of the game that's what we do we go out we go to shows we find stuff like this um, for the cheap and, uh, you know, just flip it back on eBay. Uh, our good friend Kelly's Treasures, a uh, friend of the channel, uh, just continuing to do really well selling these Edith Kanaka Ole quarters with the heavy clash on the obverse. Um, I wanted to just say uh, and preface, you know, this particular um, error by showing you this little montage of various images of the coin, um, which Kelly had used for the listing, which I think is just brilliant. It looks good. This particular one also has a couple little die chips kind of spread throughout, which is, you know, they're quite normal for this particular uh, series. Um, but here's kind of like that money shot. So you have Edith's first name clashed really heavily on Washington's hairline and ear, all right? So if you don't know this one, again, this is another big error that was discovered uh, a little while back. And um, people like Kelly are taking advantage of these. This one here sold for $50 with 15 bids. Um, one of Kelly's lower sales because, you know, they, they generally command $80 to $100. Uh, and so with that being said, you know, could interest be waning on this or is supply just right for the demand? Kind of hard to say, but $50 is still a really solid get on this one. Well, I, man, more more money, more money. This was actually a note that I had my eye on. I thought about throwing a bid in there. I'm like, wow, it sold for a lot more than I thought it would. Uh, 1981, $1 bill. Uh, again, the front of the note looks just honest, very peachy, good looking, good looking grade as well. You know, it, it looks to be... A crispy uncirculated piece. Check this out. Boom. A big old fat solvent smear right on the reverse. Uh, it, which is legit. Because the, that green matches every bit to the green ink on uh, on the print here. Uh, so, yeah, pretty crazy. Again, you know, some people would say, well, I can't believe they didn't grade that thing. And again, it's not a necessity sometimes. Because, you know, if it's diagnosable and people are in the community they know their errors they'll look at this and they're like yeah it's a real deal i don't need it graded i'll just buy it for what it is you know it's real simple and, and it also saves you guys a lot of money when you don't have to needlessly grade these things um so this one right here ended up selling for 132 dollars and 50 cents with 32 bids again very attractive piece and uh, a big seller here in the last day or two uh, more gutter fold action, 1977 $1 bill. There we go again with the 77. Uh, this one actually has two gutters. You have the one obvious kind of diagonal gutter there on the um, right of the Washington's portrait. But you see that spike coming down right the middle through Washington's right eye? That's another gutter right there. So this one has two gutter folds. Um, the note has been circulated, uh, you know, um, a little bit and it sold for hundred forty dollars and ninety four cents um, the key is the more gutters the more that these things are worth uh, you could see those gutters on the reverse as well indicating that the uh, sheet was never prepped or stretched uh, prior to the print of any side of the note a uh, pretty good one here but albeit it's got some scrapes and uh, some damage right on the obverse this is a um, I guess a 1960 Lincoln set the seller said 1960. Um, it, it could be kind of hard to tell when the last digit of the date's not uh, definable. Uh, but this was a Lincoln cent that was struck on a split 
Planchet. So this is before the strike that this thing had split. And um, yeah, that, that's what one side of the coin will look like uh, where, where it had split from the other half of the planchet, I guess. And this coin is incredibly thin. It's about half as thin as what a traditional Lincoln cent is. And because of that, you're going to get a lot of weakness in the overall strike. This one sold for $18. Could have went for a lot more, but again, you know, um, when it comes to condition, it still does play a role. You know, the, there's a difference between the selling for $18 and $40, which is kind of like the average price level for this type of error. 1945 Walking Liberty. Always check your early silvers, guys. You know, these things, uh, you buy them for melt value. And uh, there's varieties and errors to be found. You know, most dealers, they don't care about that. And they just kind of pass it forward to the uh, stackers and investors. But if you look on the reverse, half of the word dollar is missing. All right. This is uh, what we call filled die issue. And uh, the actual devices on the die were filled with grease and debris. When they strike the coins, it's going to leave that omission of, uh, you know, whatever is filled on the die transferring onto the coin. So there you go. Half the word dollar is missing. Uh, so this one sold for $40.95 for a coin that traditionally you could pick up for 10 to 15 bucks, you know, melt value. Another good one here. Wow, this is amazing. 1964 Philadelphia candy half dollar, 90% half. Uh, pretty substantial curved clip. Uh, and what I like about this one is you have a uh, pretty heavy Blakesley effect on the opposite side of that clip. Just that flattening area there. Uh, so this one here sold for, wow, $109.50. So the larger sized coins, the larger denominations, whether it's Kennedy's, Ike Dollars, Susan B. Anthony's, they command quite a bit of a premium with any sort of mint error, regardless of what it is. Uh, another cud die break, this time on a 69D Lincoln Memorial Cent. You can see the cud die break at the base of Lincoln's bust. Um, and then you can see the corresponding weakness on the reverse in that same area. How about a $38.50 sale? Three bids, very strong money. Um, the coin is quite circulated. And uh, yeah, talk about a really attractive gutter fold. The wider the gutter, the more that they're worth. This is again another, another 1977 A-series this time, $1 bill. Uh, so that's a, a pretty big, deep fold right there. Uh, you can see it on the reverse as well. Uh, and when it's this big, uh, you get a very dramatic look at the overall um, size of the sheet in which this was printed on. Um, and it kind of gives it that accordion look to it. Uh, this one sold for $159.29 with 25 total bids. Very strong money because of the size of this one. 1955 D Lincoln Wheat Cent. Always check these out. Uh, grab your magnifier. Look at the mint mark. Uh, look for um, you know the nice FS 101 double die. There's a lot to look for here on this date. This one is a very well known repunch mint mark. Uh, it's RPM number two. The secondary Denver mint mark is punched south of the primary. You can see a very defined secondary Denver mint mark here. Very dramatic. This one sold for $23.50 with 16 bits. Outstanding. And don't forget some of the later dated Jefferson Nichols. If you have a copy of the, uh, uh, what is it, Strike It Rich with Pocket Change by Ken Potter, he has a number of dates of Jefferson Nichols from the 90s to the 2000s where there are rotated die errors, okay? The seller did a really good job uh, expressing this using a 2x2 two two and a, uh, a staple guide uh, right there um, that, that's diagonal. Um, so when you flip the coin over uh, as a coin turn, and keep in mind that one staple there on the top left, bottom left, um, that this one is rotated about 45 degrees counterclockwise, and that's incredible. Uh, again, on a much newer type of Jefferson nickel. Uh, this one sold for $28 with 14 bits. A lot of activity, a lot of interest to own this one. 
Yep, I know. More paper money. Another 1977 $1 bill. Um, yeah, it's a decent looking note. Um, you know, uh, the pictures are not the best. They're a little bit out of focus, a little pixelated. Uh, but, you know, we know what it is. Uh, the front looks okay. It's got a wider margin there on the left, but nothing too crazy. That's within uh, the BEP tolerances. Flip it over, and we have a full 100% front-to-back wet ink transfer. All right, call it the uh, the paper equivalent to a die clash on a coin. Uh, there was a little bit of residual ink on the impression cylinder that transferred to the subsequent notes. Um, and the, the more brighter and darker the inks, uh, the more that they're worth, uh, because they call it first blush. It's that first, first uh, impression or first touch of that uh, subject sheet to a fresh uh, amount of ink on the impression cylinder. All right, so pretty cool. This one sold for $165.24. And we also have another one here. They call this one a back to front because he has some of the, the, the wet green ink on the front of the note. Um, this is a partial. I would say it's about 25% or somewhere thereabouts. Um, and keep in mind, with wet ink transfers, the transfer is going to be mirrored. All right, it's not going to read normal orientation. Uh, this note's in pretty nice shape, too. A very nice, high-grade, crackling fresh example. And this one sold for $121.99. Uh, it's also at 63A is the date. Couple more left here, folks. We, uh, this is the biggest cut here in the last day or two. Uh, undated because we don't know what the date is, uh, but... Pretty good job. Uh, again, uh, not the best photos. Uh, they're a little bit dark and a little bit out of focus, but that notwithstanding, we all know that these things sell really well. If you got them, sell them now because the prices have been up 5%, 10% here lately. Uh, this one, especially with no readable date, sold for $103.74. I think the last one of this same type ended up selling for about $80. So, yeah, they're definitely up. And uh, depending on the photos and how nice the coin looks, you know, you'll probably grab a little extra cash selling these right now. And the final coin that we're going to talk about here today, uh, boy, this is a scarce one. We don't see too many 44 Philadelphia Lincoln Wheat Cent off-center strikes that often. So I can't remember the last time I've seen one. It might have been a year or two ago. And uh, this one is very special. It's in great shape, too. Uh, generally problem-free. It's all centered by about 60%. Very nice. Full date. You know the you know the drill. Um, so, I, I was more than a little shocked. This one did sell for a big boatload of cash. $410.95 with 15 bids was the final sale on this. Simply incredible. Um, you know, if you come across these at a shop or show... Um, and they're like 50 bucks, man, you better buy it. Uh, 44, one of the toughest dates around. All right, as usual, our video is for entertainment purposes only. None of this is financial advice at all. Please do collect and grade responsibly. I leave it up to you guys to make that choice. Um, and thank you for watching. Hopefully this video gave you a little inspiration to do some hunting, to do some selling at this right time of the year, we're in the first couple days of December and you got to do it now because things will quiet down here in a couple weeks and your next opportunity won't be until January after the holidays have come and gone. So that's it. I'm your host, Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my video and the channel if you haven't done so already. But folks, I am out of here. I'm going to go do, go do some hunting myself. You guys take care. Have a great weekend and best of luck.